So we just arrived at the Cola Superdeep. This is um, the entrance to the building which facilitated the drilling of what was for a very, very, very long time the deepest man-made borehole over 12 kilometers deep. So as you can see, it's a bit derelict now. This is still snow, it's still cold. I'm wearing a snowmobile suit. Not because now it's that cold, but when the sun hides behind the window, suddenly everything changes. So, following the train tracks into the main, this is the main building. And so the work that we'll be playing will be sort of like a sound walk, more like a story, I think. I haven't heard it yet, so I can only describe what I think it will be. So I'll walk through these spaces and just show you a little bit of the setting. It's amazing because, you know, it's kind of incredible how people leave stuff. It's very... Like you feel like people might still come back, however they also just gave up. So you know, that's a very... Here, I don't know if you can see it. That's a snowmobile suit that's just lying there, but it's old and not used and dusty. And so, yeah, this is amazing. Of course. This is where some of the work will take place. So the story is about, I guess, these photos. Talk about it later. I just want to walk through it for a little bit. It's, this was for many years a dream of mine to visit this place. Oh, look, there's a you know, television. <laughs> I took out the coil already. Some lady shoes. You don't know whenever that would be useful. amazing. It's a weird thing walking through these Russian constructs, it's because you don't know. There's so many abandoned shoes here too. I mean, I understand that there's a lot of bottles that are empty and that people leave them here, but the shoes, the shoes I don't get, it's like people just disappeared. I mean,
I don't want to really leave, but I also can't just make movies forever, because in a little bit there will be more than a hundred Russians arriving to see this work and to listen to it. But for now, let's watch this control station. I don't know what way to go, honestly. I'm just walking here. I guess any way is the right way. Or there's no way. Oh. You don't know? I don't know. You never know. That's where it came from. I guess what you do when you, or when Sonic X builds these kinds of, I don't even know how you describe this because this is so, it's like bringing back to life it's like a zombie building, right? Because it's not it's not never gonna be the same again. It's never gonna be alive the way it is. Zombie environment, like this giant dead space with the stories and narrations of the histories of this space. Oh wow. Um I think there's something really magical about that because you're bringing back You're reconstructing, re-narrating, re-imagining stories of people that have long gone. Maybe they never existed. And you're doing that. And you bring it as an artist. And you invite local people. And these are spaces like, this was not an easy place to go to. It's, you can get lost. Half of the time the roads are completely snowed over. So they come here for this one time in their life maybe, although they're like locals. And then they hear these stories that Justin Bennett is going, you know, tell them, yeah, this little, iTunes set up <laughs> and I think there's not a lot of people here that are necessarily practicing this kind of magic. I think narrating stories is even in Western cultures something that we're not learning or teaching, talking about. Sana right there. Sana is from Friday Milk. She does the video documentation. I think a lot of local people, they never really get to experience a sound vault made by a professional storytelling artist. 
Sanna. There's the borehole, no? Is that it? Is that the borehole? Yes. Finally made it. Oh shit, this is pretty deep. Actually, this one there is my own little borehole. Okay, so here we are. This is exciting. I've been waiting for so many years. So here it is. I don't make any selfies. <laughs> but this would be selfie time at the moment. That's where it is. 12,226 meters. All the way down. And if you go down deep enough, it'll be really warm. And what the Russians would do is they would lower a mic and listen to the sounds from the border. Actually, I think we might be able to. I think there's some kind of setup. I don't know if this is for listening. <laughs> Maybe it's for dropping stuff. Oh God. No, it's not for listening. Who knows? I'll know later. Anyway. The call is super deep. I made it. <laughs> I can. I get emotional from that. I don't know if you would understand. Omen that is, but I'm gonna take it as just the omen that magic is here in all sizes and shapes. What a giant. Oh, that's a pretty good.